joining Rock Bible Kids. So excited to get this morning um, started with you guys and to learn more about God with you. So let's start off the morning. As you know, let's share about um, how we're doing with each other. So um, let's see, let's share about, I kind of have an idea. Um, let's share about how are the ways that God is taking care of you right now? And what are the ways that you feel like you need God to take care of you right now? So I'll repeat that again. So for sharing in your time of how you're doing, you can share with that person, um, if you wanna get specific, the ways you feel like God is taking care of you right now and the ways you feel like you need God to take care of you right now. Something you might need from him. All right, so pause the video, go into the time of sharing and then come right back to me. Thanks so much for sharing with each other. I hope that was an awesome time of sharing. Um, I did want to let you guys know, if, if you're wondering, um, we no longer have the worship time on here, unfortunately. I know, so sad. Um, because uh, YouTube would, doesn't allow us to play the music. It's a lot to explain, but um, it just has a lot to do with YouTube and the rules on YouTube and stuff. Um, so that's a bummer, but I do encourage you, if you can search a song on YouTube, go for it and do worship time right now. You know, you can always pause these videos at any point and it, it, I don't really care if you pause at any point. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know about that in case if it was throwing you off of like, oh, I started this worship thing and then now it's not happening anymore. So that was why was suddenly I realized that um, suddenly YouTube just stopped allowing me to do the videos with the music in it. So um, we, won't, we won't be doing that anymore. But like I said, you can still do worship just in your home right where you're at. Don't let that stop you. Um, all right, so let's start the morning off by praying and then we will get into the Bible lesson this morning. So if you could bow your heads and close your eyes with me and we'll pray for the morning. Uh, dear Jesus, uh, thank you for another Sunday morning lesson with these kids. Um, thank you for the ways that you are taking care of us. And God, we do bring our needs to you and our wants to you. And we share with you uh, the ways that we need you to take care of us right now. And I know that ha that question has to do with the story this morning. Um, so thank you for the story and thank you what we're going to learn um, about you, learn more about who you are, God, and the ways that you do take care of us. Um, so thank you that that is who you are. And Lord, I just ask that you would take care of these kids in this time and show them that you're taking care of them in um, a lot of different ways, that they have a house to be in, that they have food on their place, they have shelter, they have parents, they have friends. Um, and also, God, we have needs. We need things from you. So would we not be afraid to ask you for what we need? Uh, we pray all this in your name. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. Now we're going to get into the Bible lesson stuff. Um, so if you, in your packet, um, pull out the things you need. As you know, Bible lesson questions and um, crafting game schedule right here. And also we do the outline right here as well. Um, so you'll need these to follow along. You don't have to have these, but they do help you follow along. Um, so let's first talk about last week's lesson so that we kind of have some context. Um, it kind of makes sense for what we're learning about right now. So a reminder that we're in a series called Jesus the Servant. And um, Jesus is... Uh, he's a servant and we're seeing different parts of him, him being a servant. So in last, so a, 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 um, a couple months back, we learned about Jesus being the healer and we learned about stories of Jesus going around healing this person, this person. And it was incredible the things he was doing and the people that he healed um, to the point where he even brought a girl that was dead. He brought her back to life. It was crazy. And now we're, our, we're turning our focus to Jesus the teacher. And we're learning about all these parts of Jesus being the teacher. And guess what guys? This lesson today is the last one for the unit. And the next Sunday we're in, still in the same series. We'll still be in the same series, but we're in a different unit. And it will be called Jesus the Miracle Worker. Um, but So I'm really excited to show that with you guys. Um, but I am excited for this last story and Jesus being um, the teacher. And actually, this story is kind of unique in the way it describes Jesus as, as a teacher that you might not have maybe looked at in this type of way. Um, so a refresher, last Sunday, do you guys remember what we learned about? What do you think it was? 
Um, we learned about Jesus talking about possessions. And remember, he was saying, like, your treasure isn't actually on earth. Your treasure is in heaven with me. I am your treasure and you are my treasure. So he's changing the way that we saw the things that we have and the stuff we have. And I think we even talked about what can we do with the stuff we have. We talked about being more generous maybe and giving with the things we have and seeing that all good things we have in our life truly come from God. Like he's given them to us as gifts. Um, and because of that, because he's, if we see Jesus as the one who's given us these things, it's going to change what we do with them because we know the one who's given them to us. Otherwise, if we think that we're the ones that are, are luck got us those things or ourselves, and I think we're going to hold on to them more. And remember guys, I showed you a picture of what it looks like to trust God with your things. And remember the picture was you can hold on so tight to things because you're so scared, right? Of losing those things or something's going to happen to them. But with this way, God can't give you more things when your hands are like this. Like I, you can't give me something if my hands are like this. My hands have to open for something to be placed in them. So God, so Jesus would kind of show in this example of when you hold on to something tightly, God can't give it to us. And so we got to open our hands up like this and doing this, then God can fill our hands up and then it's holding loosely to our things. So not like this, but just enough that we still have room to open our hands up for God to give us more things and that we can give out to others. Um, Cause I think really the things that God gives us is yes, because he loves us and he wants us to enjoy life. And at the same time, it's so that he gets the glory. And when we do give our things to others, he gets the glory for that, right? So that was a recap of last Sunday. And now we're gonna do the Bible lesson for this Sunday. So come follow me and watch the video. And I hope you guys learned something new. Jesus told a story to the Jewish leaders. If a person climbs into a sheep pen, he is not the shepherd, he is a thief. A shepherd enters the pen through the gate. When the sheep hear the shepherd's voice, they recognize him and follow him. A shepherd calls his sheep by name and he leads them. If the sheep hear the voice of a stranger, they will run away. The people did not understand Jesus' story. Jesus was talking about God's people as sheep. The Jewish leaders were the stranger and Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus said, I am the gate for the sheep. They come in through me and are saved. Jesus was saying that he is the gate that leads to true life. People who come to him are like sheep who come to green pastures. Jesus warned, a thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus was talking about the devil who does not want people to follow God. Jesus said, I have come so that they may have life. I am a good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, Jesus said. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Like a shepherd risked his own life to protect his sheep from wolves, Jesus was willing to die for his people. Jesus came to do his father's plan and he was going to die and rise again. The Jews argued with one another. Many said, don't listen to him. He has a demon, he's crazy. Others said, that's not true. How can a demon give sight to the blind? The Jewish leaders asked Jesus, are you really the Messiah? Just tell us. Jesus answered, I did tell you but you did not believe because you are not my sheep. My miracles prove who I am. Jesus reminded me that he is the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The Father and I are one. Jesus is the good shepherd. God sent him to rescue sinners. 
Jesus laid down his life for his sheep so they could have forgiveness and eternal life. When we trust in Jesus, we are his sheep who listen to, follow, and obey him. What did you guys think of the Bible lesson this morning? Was it what you expected? Um, a little different, right? We're, you know, we, it, the story was a lot about Jesus being, I mean, the whole story was about Jesus being our shepherd. And would you think that a teacher is a shepherd? Maybe not, but actually, like, absolutely. Like, if you think about it, the shepherd is always teaching the sheep to not do things like teaching the sheep, don't go down that path or don't go leave the flock or don't go off that cliff. And then the sheep are constantly learning through the shepherd what to do and what not to do. So I think in that way, it's, it's cool to see like um, this different way of, that Jesus teaches us in our life through him being a shepherd. Um, so let's get into these Bible lesson questions that are on this page. Um, the first question is asking, have you ever seen sheep in real life? If so, what did they act like? Have you guys ever been to a farm, a pasture, um, a zoo? I think they're at zoos, I don't really know. Um, yeah, have you guys ever experienced sheep before in life? So I'll kind of share with you guys my experience with sheep. Um, there's this little boy in Annie. I talk about him a lot. Um, there's a farm by his house and we go there a lot because he loves that farm. He loves the animals there. And it's so funny. These sheep crack me up. Um, when we go up, so there's like a fence and the sheep are behind the fence. And when we go up to the, the fence, the sheep automatically come up to us because they think they're going to give us, we're going to give them food. And then in the end, we end up just giving them pine needles and they like the pine needles. I don't know why, but there's always this one sheep out of the, all of the other sheep that is the greedy one. And he's the first one to get up and come running over to the fence. And he will like get in the other sheep's way and like push them away just so he can get all of the pine needles or all of the, whatever we're going to give them. And I thought that was very interesting that this one sheep is already like showing greediness it's a greedy sheep like he wants all the grass for himself and actually like a lot of sheep are kind of selfish like they just neither they just want their needs taken care of they just want food and water really um and when they get food it's crazy like when um the when the staff that work there bring out the big thing of grass the sheep go running as fast as they can to that grass so they can all eat it because they're just hungry and they want their food and so I've just learned a lot <laughs> over time of going to this farm and seeing the sheep's behavior. It's very interesting. And honestly, like these sheep don't know how to do a lot of things. Like they don't really know how to get food for themselves. All they really do is sit around and wait for food. Um, and so in that way, like they really need to be taken care of. So that's kind of my experience with sheep and what I've learned. But what have you guys learned from sheep? So it says, a shepherd guides, protects, and cares for sheep. How is Jesus like a shepherd in that way? What do you guys think about Jesus in that? Do you think Jesus guides, protects, and cares for sheep? Or cares for us, his people? Do you even think of yourself as a sheep in Jesus' eyes? It's kind of a weird thought. And not in the way of like, yes, I'm a sheep and that, you know, I'm stinky and gross. <laughs> but like, do you see yourself as a sheep in the sense that you feel like you have needs and you need to be protect, guided, protected, and cared for? Yeah, you know, we all need that. And it's okay that we need that. God made us to need that. I think God made us to be almost like sheep in a way. Um, it's as if God wants to take care of us. He wants to protect us. He wants to guide us. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made us the way we are and had those needs in the first place, right? So yeah, how is Jesus like a shepherd? And you can think of this question on a general, in a general way, or you can think of it like more of in a personal way, like, how is Jesus a shepherd to you personally? I think for me, 
Um, there are just some weeks that I don't know I'm gonna get through it. And I, during those weeks, certain things happened to me that I had no control over. And um, I could only think that only God did those things. And those certain things happen perfectly so that I am taking care of that week. And um, it's like God doesn't give us more than we can handle. And I feel like Jesus is a shepherd to me in that way where he will put people in place um, he, in my life. He will bring people to come talk to me or he will move this thing around or do this thing or provide for me in this area. And it feels like he's just a shepherd. And I hear his voice during the weeks of like, go here, Therese, or reach out to this person or, you know, do these things. And then that way he guides me. Otherwise, maybe Jesus sees me going off a cliff sometimes in my life. And he's able to be like, no, let's go this way instead. And then I don't fall into a cliff, right? It's just an example. Um, but guys, isn't it interesting that Jesus refers to himself as a shepherd? Out of all the things that he could call himself, in this story, he calls him himself a, sh a shepherd. Guys, this is another way of how we get to know Jesus. He's telling us who he is. He's telling us who God is. Do you guys want to know who God is? Do you want to know who Jesus is? He is telling us right now how cool we get this vivid picture. Like we get to see into this picture of who God is through the story of Jesus using a shepherd and sheep as an example to us of what it's like in our relationship with him. I just think that's incredible. Um, so kind of the last question here, it says sheep listen, they follow and they obey their shepherd. How are we like sheep? So kind of the close off on the question, the closes off um, how are we like sheep? How do you guys think we're like sheep? How do you think you're like a sheep sometimes? Honestly, honestly, you guys, I feel like I'm a sheep in that I feel like sometimes all I need is just food. <laughs> and I get greedy and I get selfish in my life. And sometimes I'm a sheep in that I cannot see the cliff that I'm about to walk off into, or I can't see the wolves that are coming to go eat me up. And these are just examples of when hard things happen in life. Um, and we don't see them coming because we don't have control. We don't know all things. The shepherd knows all things. So think about this. A sheep only knows so much. And that's why they need a shepherd. Because honestly, guys, sheep are kind of dumb. And I think at times we can be dumb, not to say that we are dumb, but at times like we, we don't know everything in that sense, right? We're, we're, we need someone who knows everything. And the shepherd is standing there and he can see everything. He can see the cliff, he can see the wolves, he can see in this direction, he gets the full picture on, on top of that. He knows everything. The shepherd knows everything more than the sheep do. And so I think, um how we're like sheep in that we just don't know everything and that's okay we don't have to have all the answers we don't have to know everything we can be like sheep as a matter of fact god wants us to be like sheep because he wants to shepherd us god do you know that god wants to be your shepherd and he wants to take care of you and he wants to protect you and he wants to guide you and he wants to care for you he wants to take care of you he wants to keep you from going off that cliff I just keep using that as an example. Um, yeah, guys, I think we're like a sheep in that we don't know everything like a sheep does. And we aren't like the shepherd in that we don't get to see everything. And I think there's times where Jesus takes us beyond being a sheep. And he does show us things that go beyond being a sheep. And we get to see the full picture sometimes. Otherwise, like at the end of the day, like we are sheep and we need to be taken care of and we have needs. And in that way, guys, it just points to how much we need Jesus in our life. Just like a sheep needs a shepherd. Can you imagine a flock of sheep trying to do it on their own? It, it would be hilarious and painful to watch at the same time. 
just imagine the chaos. Imagine like these sheep, they just wouldn't make it. And guys, I don't think we'd make it without Jesus as our shepherd. We'd be wandering off like the sheep do. Like we just would not know what to do. We'd go off in the cliffs, right? Um, so just things to think about from this story. I got really passionate there for a second, but I hope you guys see through my passion that like I care about this stuff we're talking about and I care about you and I really want you to know who Jesus is because that is all that matters at the end of the day. So now we're going to go into questions from kids and uh, I'm really excited for what Pastor Brian's going to say because he is really good with these questions, I feel like. So enjoy questions from kids and come back and we will talk about it. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Madeline from St. Paul, Minnesota asks, Why should we follow Jesus? Why can't we do whatever we want? Well, let me deal with that second question first, because I think it'll help us answer the first one. Why shouldn't we just do whatever we want? Well, here's the answer, because we don't know what's good for us. Um, this is going to be a cheery one, so just hang with me. Um, the Bible says that our hearts are just broken completely. Our desires are flawed. We want terrible things for ourselves. We want, we're selfish. Um, we, we just want to feed ourselves. We don't care about other people. I told you this is going to be cheery. Hang with me though. So here's the reality. If we just did whatever we want, we would be a train wreck and other people would not like us very much because it would all be about us, us, us all the time. And God knows this. He knows that we're broken because of our sin. He knows that if he just let us do whatever he wanted to, it would be a mess, even more than it is now. God knows what we need better than we know. That we gotta remember that. We think we know ourselves the best, but we don't. God knows us the best. And out of love, he gives us instructions on how to live. And if we follow his way and not our way, what happens is we experience the true joy that we've been longing for. We experience the abundant life that we really want and, and crave. It's all about dying to ourselves and living for Christ, which the Bible tells us to do. And so do we really get what we want when we pursue what we want? No. But do we get what we need when we pursue Jesus? Yes. So that's the answer to your question, really. It's, it's an act of, of grace and kindness that God gives us the better, the right way to live. So we should not give in to pursuing our own hearts. Our hearts will lead us astray every single time. We should pursue God's heart for us. And we'll have what we want, really, and we'll be used by God to bring others to himself as well. So question, why is following Jesus better than following ourselves? So that was questions from kids. Thanks for watching with me. Um, so let's kind of zoom through these questions. Um, so the first question says, why is following Jesus better than following yourself? Remember, guys, that was like the last question that he kind of left off with. What do you guys think? Um, would you, let's just ask this, a yes or no question. Would you follow yourself? Would you follow your mom? Would you follow your dad, your brother, your sister? Would you follow Jesus? So with your yes and no's, maybe it's kind of helping you see the difference of following Jesus, following yourself, and even following others. Now, it's good to have role models. So we have people in our life who we can follow, who are like role models, who show us um, what Jesus looks like and who he is. But that doesn't mean we're following them. We're still following Jesus, right? But following yourself, that's hard because I think we have this idea of ourselves either a really negative bad view of ourselves or we have a really good view of ourselves and I think there's a, a balance to find in that but if you followed yourself you would have to know everything you would have to know the future you'd have to know the past um the present you would have to know everything to follow yourself so you even know where you're going 
And I think that's part of why it's better to follow Jesus. And just the simple fact that we don't know everything. We are human. We are limited. Um, and so following yourself would just lead yourself to a dead end. It would, might lead you off the cliff. <laughs> Once again, going back to that cliff example. Um, whereas following Jesus, he's someone who knows everything. And on top of that, guys, Jesus is someone that's full of complete unconditional love. Do we have complete unconditional love in ourselves? No, maybe sometimes, rare, rarely. Um, and that's only because we're learning it from God. But Jesus has that. And so if you're following someone who has complete love, then you know that they're not going to lead you into this bad place or they're going to lead you um, into being selfish and things like that. It, you're only going to grow more in love. Like you're only going to grow your, the love in you is only going to grow more and more by following Jesus and him setting the example of what love looks like, of what it looks like to love unconditional. So those are some of my thoughts on why I think it's better to follow Jesus than yourself. Um, this is a simple fact that he just knows everything. Um, and we don't, and that he is full of love and we are not. Do you understand how Madeline feels? You guys remember Madeline's question? Did you, do you ever just want to do whatever you want? Just be honest. Yes, no. Um, I'm going to say yes for myself. Yep. I've, I definitely wanted to just do whatever I wanted. Um, I do understand Madison's, how she feels in that. Just wanting that freedom makes complete sense to me. Um, sometimes Jesus tells us no to protect us. What is something you want to do, but Jesus probably doesn't want you to do? It's a good question. Um, we can get more into this question during our journaling time, so you can really think about it. Um, but maybe just think of something at the top of your head and maybe share with whoever you're with what, what it is that you want to do, but you feel like Jesus probably doesn't want you to do. Um, I kind of, for me, I would say, like, a good example is like, if I did everything I wanted to do, I probably wouldn't, I would probably treat everyone really badly. And that's kind of what Pastor Brian was saying. Like we would just be me and no one would want to be around us. Um, I, you know, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have moved my life here. I would have stayed in San Diego with all the people there, but Jesus really wanted me here. Probably because he really loves you guys and he wants me to be able to teach you guys and be here with you guys. And so that was something I really had to sacrifice. I had to sacrifice that thing I wanted. And I thought that was best for me, but it, it wasn't. Like, this is, to me, God's best. And he's only going to keep showing me his best. And this is what he wanted. And I had to say no to that other stuff, to, to say yes to him. Because he was saying no to what I was wanting. And that happens a lot in life. And that's why it's so important to know Jesus' voice, to know God's voice. And to know what he's saying to us and to know that his no isn't because he's being mean to us or God doesn't want us to have fun. His no is to protect us. If you were a sheep and you're going off the cliff and you really want to because you think that's what's best, what do you think the shepherd's going to do? No, don't go off that cliff. Don't. I want to protect you from the danger of dying or hurting yourself. So come back here. And if the, the sheep has a choice, the sheep could choose to go back to Jesus, the shepherd, or the sheep could choose to just go off the cliff, right? So we have a choice. Um, it's not saying we don't have a choice. We have a choice to still do what we want, um, but it could hurt us. It could harm us. And God knows that. And he loves us so much that he would give us the choice to do it anyway. Um, and he'd probably rescue us out of it. Um, that's what's so crazy and so incredible about God is that he gives us the choice still to uh, do what he's telling us no, not to do. Um, and he gives us the choice to also choose him and to say yes to him. So that wraps up our Bible lesson. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you guys really were thinking about these things and learned something new and that it was encouraging for you. So let's do the game, um, which I'm really excited about. Hello! So the game today is called Sheepskin and it's gonna, it says on here, provide each 
a kid with a paper plate. So this should be in your packet. If it's not, let me know. Um, and you're gonna draw a sheep face on the paper plate. Um, so the game's kind of like a craft, but um, it kind of turns into a game after you complete this part. Um, and then you're gonna provide the kids with cotton balls and glue for the kids to attach wool to their sheep face. These aren't exactly cotton balls because um, I actually ran out of them, but these should work. And you have googly eyes in there that you can also glue on here. And you're gonna use tape and attach the string to the mask so the kids can wear them. So you wear your mask like this and encourage the kids to wear their mask during the Bible story. So you could do this and act out the Bible lesson or act like you're a shepherd or act, act like you're a sheep. Um, and you could do that with whoever you're with. And the reason we're doing this game is because Jesus taught that his people are like sheep and he is like a shepherd. Today we learn more about what that means, right? What do you think a good shepherd is? All right, so now that we did the game, come follow me to journaling and coloring page time. Hello, welcome to journaling and coloring page time. Um, this is the coloring page and it's for you little ones. So color in the front and take your time with that. Um, and then if you flip over to the back, it's the activity. It says guard the flock. Um, connect the dots in numerical order to complete the fence and gate around the sheep. So maybe you guys have done then like this number, um, the number drawing um, activities. And so you find number one, which is right here. And then I will do an example for you guys. So number one, number three, four, five. I'll do a few of them for you guys, but not all of them. Eight, nine, ten. So this is an example. I was just following the pattern of numbers and you guys know how to count, I'm sure. If you don't, just ask for help. Um, any adult that, that's there with you or your parents. Um, and you're just gonna be doing one, two, three. So you're just following the numbers and it's just gonna continue to make a picture. And check out this column right here. It is um, just more activities for you guys, like the Bible story summary, the key passage that we're in, big picture question, family discussion starters, and um, family activity. So check that out. And here's the journal page. Um, on this side is where we have like the over, like a lot of questions that pertain to the um, questions from kids and the Bible story. So if you want to do these questions, you can. Otherwise, your other option is that you can just do my overall question that I do at the end, um, which is kind of this big question about it. Um, so you can do that, and I will say that towards the end. Check out the family discussion starters. That could be some really good conversations and with family. Um, over here is more of the story outline. So I already gave you outline, but here's another one for more resources on that. And we were in John chapter 10 today for the Bible story, and I did have that on the crafting game schedule, um, in case you're wondering uh, the scripture we were reading for it this morning. If you flip over to the back, um, also you guys know journal pages are for you older kids. Um, this is the activity, it's called Sheep's Sheep Search. How many times can you find the word sheep in the word search? So it's just doing a word search, and um, I will circle one as an example. So I found one right there and just keep doing it until you find as many as you can. And then the next activity is sheep or shepherd. It says, um, color the icon for statements uh, to indicate what is described then fill in the blanks with sheep or shepherd. Um, so you're going to color the icon, icon for each statement to indicate which is described. So you're going to see which one is a sheep, which one is a shepherd. So I'll do the first one for you guys. It says, enters the pen by the gate. Is it talking about the sheep or is it talking about the shepherd? I'm gonna say, it's a tricky one because Jesus described himself as the gate. I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna do both. It's talking about the sheep and the shepherd because Jesus is the gate and the sheep go through the gate. Um, so that's that activity. And then at the end, you're gonna fill in the sentence. Um, it says, Jesus, I am the good blank. Um, and you can find that one in the scripture that it has right here. So now we're gonna do the overall question right here. Um, the overall question is gonna be, um, what we ask is, what is something something that 
you that you want to do but Jesus probably doesn't want you to probably doesn't want you to and who's someone that you can share that with this week so I'll hold this up for you guys um what is something that you want to do but Jesus is probably saying that he doesn't want you to do it. Think of that thing and talk to Jesus about this. Remember to go find a quiet spot and pray about this. And remember that Jesus never gives us guilt. He's always um, motivating us through love. And so if you feel guilty at all, you know, just know that's not from God at all. Um, that when he asks these questions, it's more of a, a very loving correction. And he wants to lead you in the direction because he doesn't want you to go off that cliff, even if you want to. He doesn't want you to be hurt. And God is for you. He's on your side, just like a shepherd is for the sheep. And I want to remind you that if this is going to be a hard time for you, um, just hold on to the truth and remember the truth that Jesus is on your side. Um, yeah, so that's the journal time. Uh, now we're going to go on to the craft. So come follow me. Hello, welcome to craft time. We have two crafts this morning. Um, the first one is, it doesn't really matter, either one. Um, let's do the sheep one right here. So for this one, you're gonna need glue, so make sure that you have a glue stick. And all you're doing is just putting it together and gluing it. So, I'm just gonna read it. That, should, that is what it will look like when it is finished. And then um, you can really put your cotton balls wherever you would like, so you're just, taking the pieces off and you're just gluing them on here like this and get your glue stick right here I'll do just um the sheep head for you right here sheep face so you're just gluing it on and then for the back side you can tape on the string or you can glue it on and um I think you would glue on the string as well you could also tape on the string or glue it on. If you do glue it on, it's gonna take some time for it to dry. So make sure you leave it down and maybe put like a book on top of it to press it down so that the glue really sticks on it. And then the next craft we have is, um, it's the Psalm 23, uh, which I recommend you to look up. It says the Lord, it's talking about the Lord being our shepherd. And it's so cool because this craft is you are putting together the whole verse. So it's the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters and he restores my soul. Um, so you're gonna get your, your shepherd staff right here. And luckily these pieces are just peeling off paper and all you're doing is sticking it on to this. So let's see, this one looks like it goes in the middle and you're just doing that. And you're just gonna keep doing that. Um, and then there's like these pretty flowers right here uh, that you can use to kind of decorate it and put them wherever you want. Like in the picture, they're kind of scattered throughout the verses. So make sure to look at this because this has the order that the verse goes in. It's kind of fun too. You're, you're learning a new verse and it could be a fun way to remember it by remembering like how is it in order, you know? Which way is it in order? Um, and it also says red piece, gray piece, green piece too. If you need help, it goes by the colors on here. So that wraps up our whole morning. Thanks so much for watching, for doing craft with me, game, Bible lesson. Um, I hope that was a fun Sunday for you guys, a fun time doing this whenever you're doing it, a fun Thursday or Friday or um, Tuesday. Um, I just want to say guys that remember that Jesus is your shepherd and he takes care of you and he loves you and he guides you and he protects you. Have a great week guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.